It is a common misconception that you need to run Windows in order to, to develop in C Sharp. C Sharp and .NET are cross-platform, meaning they can be built and run on Windows, Mac, or Linux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with C Sharp on Mac using .NET 9 and VS Code. That's all you need to get started, and you can do so for free. Now, before you jump in, I want to let you know that I offer paid training courses in addition to the free videos and courses here on YouTube. If you go to IamTimCorey.com, you'll see all that I have to offer, including my master courses, which are comprehensive courses designed to get you job ready in the area they cover. I would encourage you to check them out. Plus, the income from the paid courses funds the free content I can do here on YouTube so that everyone can have a great education in C Sharp not just those who can afford it. Okay, here I am on a clean, barely started Mac Mini. I actually have the new Mac Mini uh, M4 and I have nothing on here. It's just, I have uh, Edge, that's it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install a couple of things. One, we're gonna install the .NET SDK software development kit for my version of Mac, which is the ARM64 Apple Silicon. So then what we're going to do is we're going to install at visualstudio.com, which is actually visualstudio.microsoft.com, but visualstudio.com will take you here. We're going to install down here Visual Studio Code, which will install on Mac and Linux as well as Windows. So let's get started by downloading the .NET SDK. We'll wait for that to, to download. And then what we're going to do is install. We're going to open file. Here we go. We can say continue, install, and we have to enter our password. I believe that's right. There we go. And now it's going to write the files necessary for the .NET SDK. We hit close. And we're done. Do you want to move that to the trash? Yep, go ahead and move that to the trash. We don't need it anymore. We've now installed the .NET 9 SDK, which technically means we can start using .NET right away. We don't even have to have VS Code. We could use just a, a, um, a notepad and write our C Sharp that way, but that's a little harder to do, right? We want to have some type of editor, in this case, Visual Studio Code. So we're going to install the Mac OS universal package for VS Code. Now it's a drop down here. I chose the, uh, the Mac package. It's going to start downloading. Once it does, we'll go ahead and open this zip file. Open file. It's going to expand that out. And we're going to run this Visual Studio Code. So yes, we want to open it. And there you go, Visual Studio is open. So we could actually um, drag this over into, um, into our applications. Let's, um, let's drag over here in the applications. There we go. So now we have in here our, our Visual Studio code, which is right here. You can double click it. And now we can, here we go. Um, go ahead and full screen for you, please. There we go. So we're going to skip the copilot. We're going to set up the theme is dark modern. Um, we're going to leave that alone. We're going to say mark done. And now we can come over here to our extensions and we want to search for the C sharp dev kit. There we go. This is the official development kit from Microsoft. So we're going to say install. So we've done three things now. We've installed the SDK, we've installed VS Code, and now we have installed the C Sharp dev kit. I will need to sign in in order to use my benefits. We can close that for now. Um, so now we have create new.NET project. Let's go ahead and close the windows out. Create new .NET project. And we're going to search for a, or just select 
Blazor web app. Now, this is different than what you'll see in uh, in Windows with Visual Studio. It's the same as you'd see in Windows for Visual Studio Code, but it's different than Visual Studio because VS Code is an editor, a text editor, not an IDE. It's different, and so it works differently. But we can still do the same thing. Blazor web app, and where do you want to put that? Um, let's create a, a new folder. We'll call this um, demos. There we go. And now we can um, put in here a new folder called uh, Blazor demo. Hit open. Okay. And what's the name of our app? This is going to be Blazor demo. And then we want do you want an SLN or SLNX? That's a new feature we have. Now we can choose which one you want. Let's go with the newer um, SLNX. And the project we created using this path right here, we can say create project. We'd also show all template options. So we're using .NET 9, no authentication, yes to HTTPS. We're gonna do interactive mode server. We could change that if you wanted to. Um, we're doing per page or component for interactivity. We're using the samples and we are using top level statements as in don't turn off top level statements. So go ahead and hit create. And that's gonna create for us. Yes, I trust. And let's go ahead and trust the, the root folder there. That creates for us our SLNX file, which just has the one, let's um, zoom in here a bit um, with our text, which I don't know how to do that on a Mac. That's okay. I'll figure it out in a bit. But um, we now have our program.cs, which has all of our um, all of the stuff we need for building out our application. And we can even run this application. If we come down here to debug and run, we can say run and debug. We want to say C sharp application. Let's go ahead and launch the C sharp Blazor demo HTTPS wait for it to build and restore. And we need to access some developer tools for that certificate. So put a password in there and there we go. We now have on a Mac, our Blazor application working just fine. So we've got everything we need to get going. We can jump in here, we can modify the code, we can now hit stop. We can make the changes we need in here um, to our, our components. We can come in here to pages. Let's go to the home page and say, um, hello, YouTube. Instead of hello app, we can save that. Um, which that's, uh, let's see. There we go. Um, I'm getting used to it. It's, it's on my keyboard, it's the command S to save, not the control S because again, I'm not on Windows. I prefer Windows, but let's go ahead and start this again. And when we do, hello YouTube, there we go. So I actually probably put that extra character in there. Oops, um, but that's all we need. Yep, there we go. That's all we need to get going. And now actually I wonder if I don't have hot reload installed now or set up yet. But um, with that, we now have everything set up to start using C Sharp and start developing in C Sharp. I have videos on using VS Code with uh, C Sharp and how to modify that. You can do the same thing here, um, even though you're on a Mac instead of on Windows. And here's the deal. You can also get started on Linux doing the same thing. So just wanna point out that you can develop on a Mac and still do C-sharp programming. Now you might say, hey, I don't love VS Code. There are other options. Now Visual Studio will not run on a Mac. It probably never will. And the reason why is because it's so baked into the Windows ecosystem, the Windows libraries, that trying to rewrite it, to not do that would be an enormous effort. So, but there are other alternatives for example, JetBrains Rider is another option. So you have the Microsoft provided option, which is VS Code and the C Sharp Dev Kit, which is pretty powerful and has come a long way towards being the IDE-like tool for Mac and Linux. 
but you can also utilize JetBrains Writer, which is free in certain circumstances. Um, so for a lot of people, you can use that for free for, for your own personal use. So check that out as well. I'll probably do a video on JetBrains Writer at some point, as well as running uh, VS Code on Linux as well and show you how to do that. But I just want to point out that running on a Mac with C Sharp, not a problem. Now, when you do new projects, you may find that there are some projects that don't work on Mac or Linux. What are those projects? Anything to do with Windows. So first off, if it has Windows in the name, then you probably can't use it. For example, WinForms or Windows Forms, can't use that. WPF, the W stands for Windows. So those two are off the table. Same with UWP, Universal Windows. Um, so those are off a table because the fact that they use Windows DLLs when they render their user interfaces. So you can't really develop on a Mac. Now, technically you could develop on them. You just couldn't run them. So you could change the code, but debugging is kind of hard. We can't run anything or can't see it. So just know that these things all do work on, on just Windows because of the fact they use the Windows DLLs. So just note that you can still do all of ASP.NET, so our .NET Core, ASP.NET Core. So you have MVC and, and Razor Pages and API and Blazor Server and Blazor Web Assembly and Blazor Web Apps. And you can do console applications and other product types. You just can't do the, uh, the Windows-based UI projects specifically. Okay, so that's how to get started on a Mac. Not that hard. All right. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.